Hey, good morning, church. Uh, it's so good to be with you this morning. Uh, you know, the other day, a friend, of, uh, a friend of mine and I, we were talking about how you would define the Church of Christ. You know, because we have people that are uh, listening to us from all around the world, from different denominations and, and everything. And so we were talking about how would you actually define the Church of Christ, you know? And, and my initial response was to start talking about what we are not. You know, I go in and talk about, well, we don't do this and we don't do that. Uh, we don't believe this and we don't believe that. Uh, some people have this in their building and some don't and, and all those other things. You know, I was thinking of phrases like command, example, necessary inference, uh, speak when the Bible speaks, be silent when the Bible's silent, uh, behold the pattern. You know, I was thinking of all those different things, but, but then I thought, wait a second, should that really be our focus. Um, Paul said it pretty clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, when he said, For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. You know, traveling around to all these different churches that I have, I've heard a lot of different sermons, and it seems like a lot of the sermons are about ourselves. You know, they're, they're about how we're right and everyone else is wrong. They're about why this doctrine is true and the other are false, why our interpretation of Scripture is correct and why the, why the others are misguided. Today, what I want to do is I want to give you another definition of the Church of Christ. I want, I want to redefine for us what it means to be the Church of Christ. And it begins and it ends with Jesus Christ himself. Jesus is the center of all things. He is the Rosetta Stone of the Bible. Jesus Christ makes scripture intelligible. We understand scripture because of Jesus Christ. He is the melody. He is the harmony. He is the rhythm. He is the tempo. He is the music behind all things. To quote Watchman Nee, uh, he said, the characteristic of Christianity lies in the fact that its source, depth, and riches are involved with the knowledge of God's Son. It matters not how much we know of methods, of doctrines, or power. What really matters is the knowledge of the Son of God. And so when you boil everything down, Christianity is Christ. Nothing more and nothing less. You know, Christ is really all we need. Christ is all I need. When you strip away everything else from me, what you're left with is Christ. I mean, take away my gifts, take away my ministry, take away my wealth, take away my possessions, take away my sight, take away my memory, take away my ability to read or communicate, take away any and every spiritual and religious pursuit that I have, I am still left with Christ. And in having him, I have everything I need. This, this is how I would define the Church of Christ. That is how I would define the Church of Christ. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20, one of the most magnificent passages of Scripture. This is what it says. It says, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. You see, the reason the Colossian church, and I think uh, the reason uh, why a lot of churches are having trouble is because our view of Christ is way too small. He starts off by saying to look at Christ is to discover God in his totality. Isn't that beautiful? To look at Jesus Christ is to see God, but that's not all. It says Christ is not only the originator of creation, he is also the goal of creation. 
Uh, he's not only the creator, but the consummator. But that's not all. I love this passage. That's not all. It says he lives in a realm outside of uh, uh, ticking watches and clocks. Space and time are actually his servants. But that's not all. He is the glue and gravitational pull that holds everything together. If you remove Christ, everything comes apart at the seams. But that's not all. It says that he is the very meaning of creation. Remove him and there is no meaning and purpose in life. But that's not all. He entered our fallen world, became sin to make peace between him and our fallen creation. Where there was uh, hostility, he brought peace. Where there was separation, he brought unity. Where there was death, he brought life. <laughs> but that's not all. Christ created a new humanity, a new creation, a new race like himself. We are the church, which he is the head, the authority, and the source of life. <laughs> but that's not all. Christ defeated death and dismantled the fear that was attached to it. He did away with shame. He conquered guilt. And he gave us everlasting victory in him. You see, all things are in Christ, through Christ, and for Christ. And if that's not enough, I love this. And if that's not enough, this very Christ lives in you and he lives in me. You and I have been invited to share life with the maker and creator of the world. I mean, <laughs> how beautiful is that? The task of every Christian, the task of every Christian and disciple is to proclaim Christ both to the lost and to the found. We must move God's people beyond the lower things of principles, rules, regulations, religious duties, shame, fear, and guilt. We must not get caught up in talking about and obsessing about things instead of him. To be in the church of Christ, to be the church of Christ, means to be a group of people that are consumed with Christ. To be in the church of Christ means that our hearts are occupied and preoccupied by him. That he pours from our lips, our pens, and our every pores. To be the church of Christ means to search scripture. Not to just to be right. Not just to get in our three chapters a day. Not just to prove or to disprove anything. But because, to quote John 5, 39, because they point to him. That's why we search scripture, because they lead us to Jesus Christ himself. I do not want to be known in the community because of what we are against. And, you know, I, I don't want to be known in the community for, oh, that's the church that doesn't do this or doesn't have this or they don't have instruments or they believe this and they don't believe this and all those other things. I don't even want to be known in the community for what we're for. I think having big in our facility and having key to free that we, we associate with and all those other things are great, but I don't, I, don't, I don't want to be known for the church that hosts big or the church that supports key to free I want to be known in our community as a group of people who are unashamedly, wholeheartedly, with every fiber of our being in love with Jesus and can't stop talking about him. I want to be known in our community as, man, those are the people that constantly are always talking about Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be a part of the church of Christ. Be blessed.